Welcome to the third and final part of the history of the Italian language. In this video, we will look at the modern Italian dialects and how one became standard modern Italian, the language of the country of Italy. Italy is a very young country. Most of the peninsula was unified in 1861 with the creation of the Kingdom of Italy. The Papal States and Veneto were added later in 1870. Italian has not always been the language of the whole of Italy. It is only since the unification that Italian has become the national language. Before 1861, since medieval times, Italy was a collection of independent states, the largest being the Republic of Venice, the Papal States and the Kingdom of Naples and Sicily, called the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. Each state had its own language, a Romance language descended from Latin. These languages are still spoken today and are called dialects in Italy, but they are not dialects of modern Italian, i.e. regional variants of modern Italian. Instead, they represent how vulgar Latin developed in the various parts of the Italian peninsula and islands. It is only due to historical and political reasons that they have not become national languages. Here are some example sentences in the dialects from different parts of Italy. If we compare them with standard Italian, we can see that they are related but are all very different. The sounds of Latin evolved differently in different parts of Italy. Latin had five vowels that could be pronounced short or long. This distinction was phonemic and certain words in Latin could only be distinguished by the length of the vowel, such as os and os, venit, venit. Gradually this distinction was lost and replaced by a stress accent as Latin became the Romance languages. In Sardinian, the vowel sounds remained the same, but without phonemic vowel length. In Northern Italy, the short E became E, and the long E merged with the short I to give E. Short O became O, and long O merged with short U to give O. In Sicily and the dialects of Southern Italy, the vowels merged differently to give five vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, U. These words illustrate the vowel changes. The vowel A has stayed the same, apart from the distinction between long and short A. So Latin caput and pacem give caput and pace in sardo, capo, pace in northern Italian and Sicilian capu, paci. Latin centum becomes centu in Sardinian, but a more open e sound in cento and centu in northern Italy and Sicilian. Latin long e, as in arena, became short e in arena. The short i in Latin fidem has stayed the same in Sardinian and Sicilian fide, fidi, but has changed to an e in northern Italian fede. The long I has become a short I, so Latin insula has become isula or isola. The short O of Latin modus has remained the same in Sardinian modu, but become more open in northern Italian and Sicilian, modo and modu. The long O has merely lost its length. The short U of Latin bucca has remained unchanged in Sardinian bucca, and Sicilian vucca, but become a short o in Italian bocca. And the long u has just lost its length. The consonants of Latin also developed differently in different parts of Italy. Latin pl and cl in plus and clamare have only remained in frulian and some dialects of Sardinian. And Latin c before an i or an e has remained hard in Sardinian only. It has become palatalized in all other Italian dialects, as it has in the other Romance languages too. Consonant clusters such as CT in Latin octo 
was simplified, becoming, for example, Otto in standard Italian. Final Latin M disappeared in late Latin and has not survived in any Romance language, although traces of it survive in a few monosyllabic words such as quien in Spanish from Latin chem. So, the Italian dialects all derive from Latin. They are not regional variants of standard Italian. Sardinian has its own branch as it is a very conservative Romance language, preserving many features of Latin grammar and phonology. The northern dialects of Italy, and sometimes Venetian, are grouped together as the Gallo-Italic languages and share many features with the languages of France. The Ritu Romance languages are another group of languages spoken in northern Italy and Switzerland. The Italo-Dalmatian languages are the dialects of central Italy and also some languages spoken or once spoken in Croatia. Here are the Italo-Dalmatian languages. Modern Standard Italian comes from the Tuscan dialect of Florence. But how and why did this dialect become the standard national language of the whole of Italy? In the Middle Ages, people normally wrote in Latin, but spoke vulgar or colloquial languages that didn't have a standardised grammar or spelling. These developing Romance languages were still viewed as vulgar Latin, colloquial versions of the written language. This written standard, however, had remained essentially the same as classical Latin from the time of Cicero, and by now had to be learnt in school as it differed greatly from the spoken idioms. In the 13th century, poets in Italy started to write in various spoken Romance languages such as Occitan, the language of southern France made famous by the troubadours, and also the Sicilian language. At the beginning of the 14th century, Dante Alighieri wrote in Latin De vulgari eloquentia, or as he might have pronounced it, De vulgari eloquentia in which he discussed using the vulgar tongues as a written medium. He describes them as more noble than the artificial Latin, as they are acquired naturally and subject to change over time. Dante discusses the merits of the dialects of Italy, but says that only Sicilian and Tuscan are suited to writing. He also chastised the Italians for using Occitan to write poetry, rather than their own Italian languages. Dante then produced his most famous and influential work, The Divine Comedy, La Divina Commedia, which he wrote in his own vulgar tongue, the Tuscan dialect of Florence. Other writers, such as Petrarca and Boccaccio, also wrote in the dialect of Florence. Over the following centuries, the debate concerning what should be used as a literary standard instead of Latin continued. In the 16th century, Pietro Bembo proposed the use of the Florentine Tuscan dialect as a literary standard. When the Kingdom of Italy was proclaimed in 1861, a national language was needed. However, only a small percentage of the population, 10%, spoke the Florentine Tuscan dialect. Even the first king of the New Kingdom of Italy, Vittorio Emanuele II, preferred to use his native Piemontese rather than the national Italian language. In 1868, Alessandro Manzoni wrote the first novel in Italian, I Promessi Sposi, and this helped create the literary standard for Italy. The modern dialect of Florence is still the closest grammatically to standard Italian. A phrase supposed to sum up what the most elegant use of Italian should be is lingua toscana in bocca romana. This means the language of Tuscany as pronounced by Romans, rather than as pronounced by Tuscans, as the pronunciation of certain letters in the Tuscan dialect has changed a bit since the days of Dante. So in summary, the Italian language derives from a form of the Tuscan language as spoken in Florence in about 1300 and used by writers such as Dante. People have written using other Italian languages over the centuries, such as Sicilian, but not in a standardised form. The Italian language has been influenced by various other languages of Italy over the years and is now spoken by the majority of the population. The other languages of Italy, derived from Latin, are often called Italian dialects. It is important to understand that they are not regional variations of Standard Italian, so are not dialects of Italian, they are dialects of Vulgar Latin that develop independently in different parts of Italy. Thank you for watching the history of the Italian language. Thank you.